Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to talk about AI art to support visual thinking and personal knowledge management. For those unfamiliar with AI art generation, it's a process where you input words to describe the desired image and the machine creates a unique picture based on your words. There are a number of sites that offer this service and we'll be looking at four of them in this video. Two paid and two free options. We'll also be discussing four visual thinking use cases and workflows that I've been experimenting with over the past few weeks. In closing, I will share some of the limitations I've encountered while using these tools. Let's start by looking at the two paid options, Dolly from OpenAI and Midjourney. Both of these will require you to register to their services. To compare the different options, I will use the same prompt with all of the art generators. Here's the prompt that I will be using. A photorealistic image of an anthropomorphic robot sitting at a desk in the living quarters of a spaceship, holding a stylus in hand and staring at an empty screen. With Dolly, you get 50 credits when registering for the trial. This means you can try the engine with 50 different prompts and each time you will receive four image variants. So in total, you will get 200 images. After the trial, you'll receive 15 free credits each month, plus you can purchase additional credits, $15 for 115 credits, which is 13 cents per generation prompt or roughly three cents per image. Midjourney is another paid service that is accessed through a Discord bot. It can be used on the Midjourney Discord server or can be installed on any other Discord server if you are an administrator. Midjourney offers many options for generating images and has a helpful page for learning more. See the link in the video description. In this demonstration, Dash Dash V4 instructs the engine to use the version 4 stable diffusion algorithm and Dash Dash AR3 colon 2 to create an image with a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, which is ideal for use as a video thumbnail, for example. When you first register for the service, you get 25 minutes of GPU time, which is roughly enough for 25 images. Each time you provide a prompt, Midjourney generates four variants of the image. After the trial period, you can either register for a new trial with a different Discord account or purchase a subscription. The basic subscription costs $8 per month if you pay a year in advance or $10 per month if you pay monthly. This includes 200 GPU minutes per month or approximately 4 cents per image prompt. The free option that we'll be discussing is Stable Diffusion Online. While this service may generate less impressive images, it can still be useful for supporting visual thinking. I highly recommend exploring the prompt database on the site for inspiration, learning and access to ready-made images. I had planned to also include Dolly Flow on Google Colab in this video, but it was not functioning when I tried to use it again after an initially successful attempt. I've included the link to it in the video description for those who want to give it a try. But even if you don't want to fiddle with the Colab workbook, you may want to read the guide to writing prompts for text to image AI and the clip templates. Both are available as links from the workbook, but I've also included these links in the video description. And finally, there's Diffusion B. This software can be downloaded and run on a local PC, but currently it is only available for Mac. 
Since I don't have access to a Mac, I was not able to try it. However, they are reportedly working on a Windows version and you can sign up to get beta access when it becomes available. If you have a Mac and have used Diffusion B, please let us know your experience in the comments below. Now let's explore how you can use these art generators to help you think better. We'll look at four use cases. First up, let's look at using AI art for illustration. One way to use image generators is to describe the image you want in detail. For example, if you want a drawing of a wizard, you can describe the style such as a cyberpunk wizard or the feeling you want to convey such as the will to endure or the artistic style such as in the style of Salvador Dali or the medium such as a pencil drawing. You can also describe the background such as in a forest or on a white background. Here's what a pencil drawing in the style of Salvador Dali of a cyberpunk wizard with the will to endure on a white background looks like. If you want to blend the image into a mind map or some other drawing, I recommend instructing the AI engine to use a white background. Then you can use a tool like LunaPic to replace the white background with a transparent color. To do this, upload the image to LunaPic, click Edit and select Transparent Color. Choose either Transparent Area or Transparent Color and select the color you want to replace. You may need to experiment with the settings to find the best transparency for your image and the background color of your Excolidural drawing. When you're happy with the transparency, save the image as a transparent PNG and drop it into Excolidraw to use in your mind map. If you want something more abstract or if you struggle to think of a good illustration, then I recommend first feeding the description of the idea to chat GPT-3, asking it to write a short poem based on your text. I recommend short poetic forms such as a haiku, a tanka, a synquin or a couplet. Use this poem to prompt the image generator. Take for example this quote from Emergence by Steven Johnson. What image would you use to illustrate it? Like ant colonies or the cells of a developing embryo, neighborhoods are patterns in time. No one wills them into existence single-handedly. They emerge by a kind of tacit consensus. The artists go here, the investment bankers here. The great preponderance of city dwellers live by those laws without any legal authority mandating compliance. It is the sidewalk, the public space where interactions between neighbors are the most expressive and the most frequent that helps us create those laws. Let's first convert this paragraph into a haiku. If you don't like GPT-3's first response or would like to see additional responses, you can generate the response as many times as you like. Now take this haiku and let's see what Midjourney is able to do with it. Notice that I added an avant-garde painting to the haiku just to throw in a bit of additional fun. Whether you like the result or not will depend on your taste. However, I find these images thought-provoking as I reflect on the idea of neighborhoods as patterns in time. You can also use AI-generated art as a tool for lateral thinking. The term lateral thinking was coined by Edward de Bono. 
It is a way of solving problems by looking at them from unconventional angles. It involves breaking away from your existing thought patterns, the linear ways of thinking, and approaching problems with a more open, flexible mindset. Lateral thinking involves making connections between seemingly unrelated ideas and using imagination and intuition to come up with novel solutions. Lateral thinking is often used to find creative solutions to complex problems or to break out of a mental rut. The goal of lateral thinking is to come up with fresh, original ideas that can lead to new, innovative solutions. One approach for generating lateral ideas is writing down your problem and asking GPT-3 to recommend visual metaphors, then feeding these metaphors to the art generator and reflecting on the resulting image. This is what I did to illustrate lateral thinking. When writing the prompt for the art generator, I combined multiple suggestions offered by GPT-3 into a single metaphor. Another approach for generating unconventional solutions to a problem, as recommended by De Bono, is going to a shopping mall, visiting shops, picking up random items in the stores, and finding a logical connection between the item in your hand and the problem on your mind. Doing this will help you see the issue in unexpected ways. And you can use AI art in the same way. You may ask Dolly 2 to surprise you with an image, or request a random word or random scene from GPT-3 by typing, for example, surprise me with a random scene, then feeding this into Midjourney or Dolly, and finally creating a mind map with this image and finding as many connections between the image and the problem you want to solve as possible. While these tools can be really useful for generating unique and interesting images, there are a few limitations that I've encountered. First, the quality of the images can vary quite a bit. Some of the images I've generated have been really impressive, but others have been less successful. Even images that look perfect at the first glance will have tiny errors like malformed hand or a misplaced eye or similar. This can be frustrating if you're trying to create a specific image and the AI doesn't quite get it right. Second, AI can sometimes generate images that are a little bit difficult to understand. This can be especially true when it comes to abstract concepts. On the upside, these more difficult images are ideal to spark lateral ideas. Ambiguous images might actually be exactly what you're looking for when using AI art for visual thinking. Third, I wanted to create a comic strip using AI art, but I found that it was hard to get the AI to generate the same character in different scenes. This is easier to accept when working with a less defined character like a cartoon worm, but I found the same problem even using well-known characters like Mickey Mouse. Notice how all the Mickeys look different in these images. This makes it super difficult to create visually cohesive stories. Fourth, I found that AI struggled with abstract concepts. To work around this, I tried using GPT-3 chatbot to convert abstract ideas into more concrete descriptions that I could use for generating art. Finally, I tried using these tools to upscale low-quality old photos, but I wasn't very successful in my first few attempts. Overall, while AI art generators can be really useful, they do have their limitations. It is important to keep these limitations in mind when using these tools. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful.